All right, here we go. Uh, this is section 3.4. We are on the middle of the last algebra chapter in our book for Accelerated Math 1. 3.4 is simplifying. Is that right? Simplifying? Is there a Y in there? Simplifying. Yeah, that's my bad. Radical. We'll just say simplifying radicals. Okay? Now, if you have the square root of 28, I hope that everybody in here can simplify that by hand. Okay? If you can't simplify it by hand, then what will simplify it for you? The calculator. So, the first thing I want you to do is pick up your calculator and be able to type square root of 28 in it. Okay? Because if it is a numerical problem, meaning no variables in it, okay, you should be able to type it in your calculator and get the correct answer. What is your calculator size? 2 root, two root seven. 7. All right. Now, So now that you know the answer is 2 root 7, you should be able to get that problem right 100% of the time. I'm going to talk about how to do it by hand because when I add in an x squared later, right, your calculator won't do that for you. So you have to be able to do this by hand. You have to have an idea of how to simplify radicals. I know some of you already know how to do this, so just bear with me. Square root of 28 uh, breaks down into 4 times 7. Right? Well, 4 breaks up some more into what? 2 times 2. This is called the prime power decomposition. You don't have to write that down. But this is actually the prime powers and its decomposition because we broke it all the way down. If you have a pair of something underneath the radical, right? This is understood to be a 2, right? A square root. If you have a pair of something underneath the radical, then how many do you bring out to the front? One. One. Two comes outside the house, right? And the seven's left underneath the house. Why is it still underneath? You only had one of them, right? Go back to what you know about the square root of 9. Everybody knows the square root of 9 is 3. Why is it 3? Because you had a pair of 3's underneath the radical and 1 came out to the front. Okay? So that's all review with numbers. If it's numerical, if it's strictly 100% numerical, pick up your calculator and get it right. Okay? That's what I'm telling you to do. There's no reason for you to miss it. You should know how to do it by hand, but why, why even mess with it? Okay? Get it right on your calculator. Now, having said that, we need to be able to do problems that look like this because your calculator will not do problems with variables. Right? It doesn't know what the square root of x to the fourth or y to the fifth is. We follow the same rules that we just got done doing with numerical problems. Even we have a number in this one, right? And do the number first. 8 breaks up into what? 4 and 2. 2, 2, and 2. It's 2 cubed. You're right, 4 and 2. But that breaks down into 2, 2, and 2. How many x's do we have? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. How many y's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? I don't want to have to do this all the time. What if that was x to the 14th and y to the 15th? I don't want to have to write out 14 x's and 15 y's. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But if it's small, you could write it out like this, okay? You've got a pair of twos, a pair of x's, a pair of x's, a pair of y's, a pair of y's, and now you can simplify the radical. What comes out to the front? 2x two squared, y squared, all right? Root, what was left underneath the radical? A 2 and a y. 2 and a y. Now, would you like an easier way to do this problem rather than writing out all those x's and y's? All right. What number is understood to be right here? A 2. A 2, I'm sorry. A 2 is understood to be right there. That means square root. You're right. There's a 1 out front. But there's a 2 right there. And so watch. How many times does 2 go into 4? Two times, and what's the remainder? There is no remainder. Two goes into four, there's no remainder. Okay, let's try that again. How many times does two go into five? Two, two times, there's a two, and what's our remainder? One. How do we know something's going to be left underneath the radical? Because it's odd. Write that down. If you have an odd power underneath the radical, OK, 
okay, then you're going to have something left underneath the radical after you simplify. If it's y to the 11th or y to the 17th or y to the 21st, you're going to have something left underneath the radical. Scarlett? It doesn't. That's right. This is this little trick here is only with the variables. Good question. All right. Can I erase this? I'm kind of working on a limited board space. Everybody got this? Okay. All right. Let's try uh, 2x root 3x times 4x root 5x squared. This is times. Okay. A little different problem. Still have to simplify. First, though, we have to do what? What operation are we doing? Multiplication. 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 Right? We multiply radicals. What do we have to do on the outside? Multiply. multiply. What do we have to do on the inside? Multiply. We multiply. We multiply the outside. We multiply the inside. Uh, on the on the inside. I'm oh, sorry. On the outside, what do we get? 8x squared. 8x squared. Very good. On the inside, what do we get? 15x cubed. Very good. Are we done? No. no why not? It can be simplified. Very good. All right. Does the 15 break down? No. It does. Into 3 and 5, you don't have a pair. It's going to stay underneath. How about x cubed? What's going to happen? 1x is going to come out. How many x's are going to stay in? 1. Now, you already had an x squared on the outside. So I got 8x squared, I bring out an x, right? One came out, y'all tell me one came out, and I got 15x underneath. How do I combine these? What does this become? 8x cubed on the outside, root 15x. That's how we say that. So you could say square root, but it's easier to just say 8x cubed, root 15x. Questions? Any questions on that? All right, I think we pretty much covered... Simplification and multiplication. Let's talk about division. Let's talk about division. What if I have the square root of 11 over, say, 16? What's your first step? Simplify. Nope. Then you do simplify the fraction. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. I see some of you doing it, but I don't hear anybody saying it. Pick up your calculator. Right? Why? No, because you're, it's all numbers. Right? If the problem is all numbers, immediately pick up your calculator and type it in. Right? Your calculator gives you the answer. What is it? Square root of 11 over 4. Now let's talk about how they got that. Okay? When I have the fraction underneath the radical, all I do is break that up and say the square root of 11 over the square root of 16. Well, what's root 11? 11, right? Somebody tried to tell me that that was two ones, right? There was a pair of ones and I could bring a one out to the front. I was like, no, it doesn't work like that, guys. Uh, but the square root of 16 is nice. Why is the square root of 16 nice? Perfect square, good. Right terminology. It's a perfect square and we just get four. But I want you, none of you recognize that it was numerical, right? You were trying to do it by hand, which is fine. But I want you to get the correct answer. Okay, pick up your calculator and type it in. All right. So now let's do one that's a little harder. Uh, that is numerical. Square root of seven over five. Don't don't use your calculator right yet. Okay. It obviously would give you the right answer. But I want to show you on this basic problem how to get the answer before we do one with variables. Okay. You may have done some of this last year. Let me show you. Let me let me lead just for a second. Square root of 7 over the square root of 5, right? All we did was break it up. There is a concept that you need to understand at this point. No matter how high up you go, bab, uh, a square root in the denominator is bad. Write that down. Okay, I could give you a fancy definition. But anytime you have a radical in the denominator, that's bad. You don't ever give an answer with a radical in the denominator. Okay, later on in trig, when you do trig, the unit circle and all that, you never, you always have to, here's the right term, rationalize. We are going to write that down. 
we're going to rationalize the denominator. Meaning we're going to get rid of the radical. In this problem, we're sitting there with a root 5 in the denominator and that's bad. Okay? That's kind of a simpleton way of saying it. But everybody understands bad. Yes. Okay? So I don't have to, don't have to change it. Alright, somebody's got a hand up. Yes? Like to do it. Oh, never mind. You know how to do it? Oh, wait. I was wondering, like, I wondered if I'd know it right, but I don't know. All right, what do you think it is? No, you just, like, multiply both of them by the square root of 5. Very good. Top oh, and yeah. bottom. Oh, yeah. You rationalize the yeah. top and the bottom by multiplying by root 5 on the top and the bottom. And let's talk about why that's okay. Technically, what is root 5 over root 5? five? Technically. Five. Five. One. One. And when I multiply something by 1, does it change? No. No. It may be rewritten. But it technically is the same amount. 42 times 1 is still 42. Okay, my favorite number. But multiplying it by 1 doesn't change it. Now, how did we come up that we're going to multiply by root 5 over root 5? Where did that come from? Sit up, Justin. Dustin, sit up, please. I know you're tired, buddy, but you need to, you need to be paying attention. Yes? Because if you times it by itself, it's a perfect square. Square root of a red brick times square root of a red brick equals what? A red brick. No matter what's underneath, when I've got radical 5 times radical 5, I just get 5. Now everybody wants to tell me that that's radical 25, but that's an extra step. The radicals just go away. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. That's the beautiful thing about it. Now what happens on the top? What is the square root of 7 times the square root of 5? Square root of, square root of 35. Now, can I cancel? No, because the 5 is under radical. Write it down. Even if you knew that, write that down. Write, you know, draw an arrow and say nothing cancels here. Why? Because the 35 is under the radical and the 5 is outside the radical. Nothing cancels here. You may be tempted to cancel, but nothing cancels. How about this one? Root 3 over 3. Can I cancel those? No. No, I cannot. Okay. How about 3 root 3 over 3? Yes. Can I cancel yes. the 3's now? Yes. These 3's could cancel and I just get root 3. Okay? So, I mean, that's some rules of radicals that you probably should know, but some of you may not know them. Questions? Any questions? All right. Everybody type in the square root of 7 over 5. Make sure your calculator gives you root 35 over 5. Your calculator will do that problem for you. Make sure that it does. You got to get one of mine. Okay, I'm not showing you on that Texas instrument. Anybody else? All right. So now let's do one that the calculator won't do for you. Uh, the square root of. Let me see my book here. Four over forty-nine y. That's a pretty good problem. We'll, we'll see what we do here. <clears throat> What's your first step? Break it up. Good, man. Square root of 4 over the square root of 49y. Okay? Now what? You may be tempted, because that 49 is a perfect square, you may be tempted to pull the 7 out. If the y was like y squared or y to the 4th or y to the 6th, yeah, simplify it. Because what? That would get rid of the radical in the denominator. And that's a good thing. We wouldn't even have to rationalize. But because that 7, that y is odd, I can't do that. So you might as well not pull the 7 out now. You'll pull it out later. Okay? Don't, don't pull the 7 out now. That's why I did this example on purpose. So we're going to rationalize. Samaradadu, what are we going to multiply the top and the bottom by? 49y. Root 49y over root 49y. That's what you meant, right? Okay. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. On the top, what do you get? 170. What does that give you? 196. Two. What is the, when I pull the four, 49, what's that going to be? 14 square root of y. 14 root y. You're smart enough. You can kind of think a few steps ahead and do that in your head. Yes, you could get the square root of 4 times 49, some big number, right? Uh, 14 squared would be like 196, I think. Yes. So it could have given you 196, and then you end up pulling out the 14 later. 
Uh, I just did it all in one step. What do you get on the bottom? This is very important. What do you get on the bottom? 49 Y. 49 Y. The radical is gone. Right? That's the whole point. 49 Y. The radical is no longer there. That's what was our goal in the beginning. What do we do now? Are we done? Can I take something out of 14 and 49? Yes. Right. They I better take a 7 out of those two. Okay? They're both outside the radical. I better simplify it. I hope this is on the video. Uh, it is? I'm still on there? Okay, good. Uh, so what do I, what's my answer here? Root y over 7y. Is that right? No, you got to put a 2. Better put a 2 right there. Put a two right there. Salmon? Um, like in the beginning of the problem, could you just uh, plug in four, uh, root four over 49? You could have gotten two over seven root y. Yeah, like I'm You would multiply by calculator. root y over root y, and you would have gotten two root y over seven y. Isn't that what we just got? Mm -hmm. You yeah, could have done that as well. But I showed you what I felt to be the easiest thing to do. Okay. That would have been an alternate way to get the answer. And that would have been fine. Okay. Any questions on rationalizing the denominator? No. Alright, I'm going to do one more type. And I'm not going to spend any time on it. I'm going to show you why. 3 over 6 plus root 5. Why am I not going to spend any time on this problem? It's numerical. It's all numerical, which means what? You can do it on your calculator. You can do it now. Is that what your calculator gave you? Or is that what your calculator gave you? The first one. The top one. The top one. Okay, do it again. If you didn't get either one of them, something's wrong. Okay. Now, look how I did it by hand. 6 plus root 5. I had to multiply by 6 minus root 5 and 6 minus root 5. This may look familiar. We did this the first week of school. Anybody remember what that's called? starts with a C. Con... Conjugate. 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 Write that down. This right here is the conjugate. That's the conjugate. What would be the conjugate here? If it just asks you what is the conjugate, which could or could not be on the EOCT, what would you say? 7 plus 3 root 2. Now why am I spending any time on this problem? It's numerical. Your calculator will do it for you. Type it in. One more chance to practice. Type it in your calculator page. Type this problem in your calculator. Practice, practice, practice. Wait, what's the conjugate? The conjugate is this with this sign change. Okay, type it in your calculator. Tell me what you get. Are you, oh, I was going to wonder, are you going to put any like No, that? no variables. Okay. There won't be any like this with a variable. Good question. Shh, please don't talk. Let's see, what's our time on there? Almost 19. 19 minutes? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Give me the answer to this one real quick. What is it? 28 plus 12 root 2 over 31. Awesome. Is that what everybody got? Anybody not get that? Now's your chance and I'll help you on your calculator.